Rothwell, business leaders from Michigan. Welcome back to the program. Good morning, Michael Patrick. I don't know if you did. I guess you probably had a chance to at least look at the basics. What's your reaction? Well, I mean, first of all, good to see. I think that uh, there are some proposals being made, and I think the House deserves some credit for at least putting forward a proposal. Our concern, basically, Michael Patrick, is it's not sustainable. Uh, it's relying really a lot on one-time funding or funding that you really can't depend on in future years. It still doesn't meet kind of the bare minimum of $1.2 billion to just fix the roads that everybody seems to agree is the real number. And, you know, the other problem is it really kind of creates another problem. I mean, it's, it's taking away money from some other critical functions that, for example, economic development. I mean, for us to be cutting back our business attraction and retention efforts at a time when we're just beginning to build momentum in our state is really is really a problem. So, you know, I think it, it still points out the fact that the answer here is we're going to have to raise a billion to a new dedicated revenue, and there's really not a, a very good way of getting around that, uh, that answer. What are the nuts and bolts, if you can break it down simply for us, of the House plan? Well, you know, basically, I'm not going to go through all the details, yeah. but basically what it does is it, it takes... Uh, first of all, a, a presumption that there is going to be revenue growth in the future and dedicates that revenue growth towards roads. Well, you know, we've been down this road before. Rev, you know, uh, financial forecasts don't always turn out the way you expect them to, and that's a big if. It's hard to, you know, make long-term capital improvements when you're depending on that kind of uh, those kind of numbers. Second is it takes money away from the Michigan Economic Development Corporation, uh, that now funds things like our Pure Michigan uh, travel campaign, uh, incentives to uh, attract and retain businesses in our state. Uh, also, you know, there are some good things in there, too. I mean, it does provide some guarantees in terms of how roads are constructed and things like that. But, again, depending largely on uh, revenue that you just can't depend on year in and year out. Uh, we we know the MEDC is near and dear to your heart. The uh, there are some people who would lose in here and who would pay something they're not used to paying. For instance, those who drive electric cars. Uh, there there would be people who would get new fees, and I guess in some sense taxes too, right? Yeah, there there are some new revenue in there, and I think the speaker's been very clear that he is not against uh, new revenue. He just believes that there's a, a larger portion of the proposal that should be funded with existing revenue. And that's where, you know, I think the rub comes in is that our, our general fund today is, you know, has been cut over the last, you know, 10 years now because of the recession we went through pretty, pretty significantly. And it's never to say you can't do things more efficiently. I'm sure you, know, you can. Uh, but to think you're going to get a billion two out of a general fund budget that's, you know, just about $10 billion, we just don't see how that's going to happen. Uh, any idea what that uh, bridge is going to be named, the governor and the uh, Canadian <laughs> prime minister this afternoon? Maybe after you, Michael Patrick. What do you think? Well, the NPS stand? <laughs> I did travel to Canada a number of times before I was 21 years old, if you know what I mean. But uh, I don't want to think they want to commemorate that by any means. I, I have no idea. I, I just, at this point, we don't care what it gets named. Let's just get the darn thing built, right? Yeah, there's not. it's not under construction even yet, is it, or is it? I, you know, I'm not sure. I, yeah. I think there is some land assembly uh, going on, uh, but you know, again, I think they've been probably uh, reticent to get too far ahead until they get the uh, federal government to kind of pitch in the money for the uh, customs plaza. And then, you know, that's another thing. I mean, why, why it's taking so long for that to happen when it just seems like a, a no-brainer that that's something that we should do. Yeah, good news from General Motors. They're going to spend a billion dollars of investment in the Warren Tech Center with renovations there. Yeah, well, again, look, you know, we owe so much of this uh, recovery we've had over the last few years to the auto industry and to our domestic automakers of Ford and General Motors in particular have just done an outstanding job. And, you know, we always you know try to say, look, you know, we want to diversify our economy, but at the end of the day, the auto industry is uh, still the, the big engine for Michigan. Uh, the Senate Fiscal Agency, for what it's worth, said that uh, revenue should be slightly higher than expected amid an improving economy. That's also good news and uh, reflective, I guess, yeah? Yeah, I think so. And, and again, provides a little bit of flexibility in solving you know, some of the budget problems that we talked about earlier. Although, you know, it's going up, it's not going up a lot. And I think that is, you know, a cautionary note to 
what we spoke of with roads that, you, you know, you, yes, uh, you, there will hopefully be increased revenue, but you can't really depend on how much of it you're going to get. And again, I think it's going to go up 100 or maybe $200 million at most. Um, that, sh- I think, should show us that we're not going to be able to depend just on normal revenue growth to be able to fund a, a road fix of the magnitude we're facing. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you very much for the wide-ranging conversation this morning. I look forward to uh, seeing you on Mackinac Island, if uh, not before. We'll see you up there. Thank you very much. Uh, The Detroit Regional Chamber Policy Conference. We will be.